Hello and welcome to News and Design, Transportation TV Spotlight on developments in the world of transportation engineering and design. But it's a bicycle thumb, it's a bicycle thumb, just for not riding in a bicycle. Casey Neistat's tongue-in-cheek YouTube video about New York City bike lane obstructions has been viewed six million times. It's a funny video about a serious topic related to New York City's massive expansion of its bicycle network and its successful promotion of commuter cycling. The challenge is that with any major city, and particularly the, the largest city in the U.S., um, there's all kinds of other things that are going, uh, going on in the city, particularly freight access, passenger cars, cabs, pedestrians that are all trying to use the same amount of this limited space. Our guest on News and Design this month is Allison Conway, a Ph.D. and assistant professor of civil engineering at City College of New York, located in New York City. Professor Conway helped lead a City College University of Connecticut Auburn University study called Characteristics of Multimodal Conflicts in Urban On-Street Bicycle Lanes. So the goal of this project was really to go out and try to look at what are the types of conflicts that are happening in those bicycle lanes and address maybe some of the characteristics that would allow us to help to predict where conflicts are going to happen, what types of bicycle lane designs, what types of land uses, um, time of day, different variables to see if, if we can figure out where are the conflicts going to happen and how can we make decisions that take a more holistic view of the bicycle network. A conflict is any time that a bike is required to stop or leave a bike lane due to other transportation modes, including pedestrians. This project used many sources of data. Uh, first, we started out using existing data sets, the New York City bicycle map, the uh, New York City Department of City Planning's Map Pluto data, which is land use data, and American Community Survey data to allow us to identify where are, do we expect a lot of traffic in terms of all modes and particularly bicycles. Um, overlaid those using a GIS suitability analysis, which helped us to identify specific locations in the city where we expected a lot of conflict. A large group of students also recorded the number of conflicts that occurred at different times and locations. The data was analyzed with respect to existing curb regulations, land uses, and other data points. Probably the key findings that we found that we think are most important is that bicycle lane design does impact the types of conflicts that are going to happen multimodally. Uh, we identified that a, a buffered lane, when we add a buffer between a travel lane and a bicycle lane, from a cyclist comfort perspective, that's most likely a preferable lane because the cyclist feels separated from um, the travel lane. But the researchers also found that solving one problem can create new problems. The key, they say, is to keep collecting data. Ultimately, we'd like to collect an even more comprehensive data set that would allow us to actually develop a predictive model to predict locations where we expect conflicts that may not just inform design, but things like enforcement. So the points being made in this funny video are receiving some serious study by New York City transportation officials. To find out more, go to www.ccny.cuny.edu. We want to thank Professor Conway for being our guest. That's our show for this month. Thanks for watching, and be sure to send us your ideas and comments to tdorsey at ashto.org. And as Keith Platty always says, never stop designing for the future.